not marble nor the gilded monuments sonnet fifty five by william shakespeare from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox org by thomas peter not marble nor the gilded monuments sonnet fifty five not marble nor the gilded monuments of princes shall outlive this powerful rhyme but you shall shine more bright in these contents than unswept stone besmeared with sluttish time when wasteful war shall statues overturn and broils root out the work of masonry nor mars his sword nor war's quick fire shall burn the living record of your memory gainst death and all oblivious enmity shall you pace forth your praise shall still find room even in the eyes of all posterity that wear this world out to the ending doom so till the judgment that yourself arise you live in this and dwell in lovers eyes end of poem this recording is in the public domain the dead friend from in memoriam by alfred lord tennyson from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by sonia craig franklin liang yao jason in panama and thomas peter the dead friend from in memoriam twenty two the path by which we twain did go which led by tracts that pleased us well through four sweet years arose and fell from flower to flower from snow to snow but where the path we walked began to slant the fifth autumnal slope as we descended following hope there sat the shadow feared of man who broke our fair companionship and spread his mantle dark and cold and wrapped thee formless in the fold and dulled the murmur on thy lip twenty three when each by turns was guide to each and fancy light from fancy caught and thought leapt out to wed with thought ere thought could wed itself with speech and all we met was fair and good and all was good that time could bring and all the secret of the spring moved in the chambers of the blood twenty five i know that this was life the track whereon with equal feet we fared but then as now the day prepared the daily burden for the back but this it was that made me move as light as carrier birds in air i loved the weight i had to bear because it needed help of love nor could i weary heart or limb when mighty love would cleave in twain the lading of a single pain and part it giving half to him eighty five but i remained whose hopes were dim whose life whose thoughts were little worth to wander on a darkened earth where all things round me breathed of him o oh, friendship equal poised control o oh, heart with kindliest motion warm o oh, sacred essence other form o oh, solemn ghost o oh, crowned soul yet none could better know than i how much of act at human hands the sense of human will demands but which we dare to live or die whatever way my days decline i felt and feel though left alone his being working in mine own the footsteps of his life in mine my pulses therefore beat again for other friends that i once met nor can it suit me to forget the mighty hopes that make us men i woo your love i count it crime to mourn for any overmuch i the divided half of such a friendship as had mastered time which masters time indeed and is eternal separate from fears the all-assuming months and years can take no part away from this one hundred and seventeen o days and hours your work is this 
to hold me from my proper place a little while from his embrace for fuller gain of after bliss that out of distance might ensue desire of nearness doubly sweet and unto meeting when we meet delight a hundredfold accrue one hundred and twenty three the hills are shadows and they flow from form to form and nothing stands they melt like mist the solid lands like clouds they shape themselves and go but in my spirit will i dwell and dream my dream and hold it true for though my lips may breathe adieu i cannot think the thing farewell end of poem this recording is in the public domain Elegy on Captain Matthew Henderson by Robert Burns From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin Elegy on Captain Matthew Henderson He's gain, he's gain, he's freest ton The a best fellow e'er was bun The Matthew nature cell shall mun by wood and wild, where happily pity strays for long, for a man exiled. Ye hills near neighbours o' the stands, that proudly cock ye crestling kens, ye cliffs the haunts of sailing yens, where echo slumbers, come join ye nature's sturdiest bends, my wailing numbers. Morn. Ilka grove the cushat kens, ye hazely shores and briery dens, ye burnies wimplin down ye glens, with toddlin din, o foaming strang where hasty stems frae lin to lin. Morn, little harebells o'er the lee, ye stately foxgloves fair to see, ye woodbines hangin bonnily in scented bowers. Ye roses on your thorny tree, the first of flowers. At dawn, when every grassy blade droops with a diamond at his head, at even when beans their fragrant shed, e the rustling gale, ye mockins widden through the glade, come join my wail. Mourn ye wee songsters of the wood, ye grouse that crap the heather bud, Ye kelly's calling through a clud, ye whistling plover, and mourn ye wearing patrick brood, he's gain for ever. Mourn sooty coots and speckling teals, ye fisher herons watching eels, ye duck and drake with airy wheels circling the lake. Ye bittens till the quagmire reels, rare for his sake. Mourn. Clamouring crakes at closer day, Mang fields a flowering clover gay, And when ye wing your annual way, Frey a cold shore, Till the far worlds were lies in clay, Wham we deplore. Ye hullets frey your ivory bower, In some old trees or eldritch tower, What a time the moon with silent glower Sets up her horn. Wail through the dreary midnight hour till Wokriff morn. O rivers, forests, hills, and plains, oft have ye heard my canty strains. But now, what else for me remains but tales o' woe, and fray my e'en the drapping rains, morn ever flow. Morn spring, thou darling of the year, ill cowslip cup shall keep a tear. Thou simmer while each corny spear shoots up its head. Thy gay green flowery tresses shear for him that's dead. Thou autumn, with thy yellow hair, in grief thy sallow mantle tear. Thou winter, hurling through the air the roaring blast, wide o'er the naked world declare the worth we last. Mourn him, thou sun, great source of light, Morn impress of the silent night, and you, ye twinkling stannies bright, my Matthew mourn, 
for throw your orbs ye tain his flight near to return o henderson the man the brother and art thou gone and gone for ever and hast thou crossed that unknown river life's dreary bound like thee where shall i find another the world around go to your sculptured tombs ye great in other tinsel trash estate but by thy honest turf i'll wait thou man of worth and weep the eye best fellow's fate ye lay in earth end of poem this recording is in the public domain And doth not a meeting like this by Thomas More, from the world's best poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. And doth not a meeting like this, and doth not a meeting like this make amends for all the long years I've been wandering away, to see thus around me my youth's early friends, as smiling and kind as in that happy day though haply over some of your brows as over mine the snowfall of time may be stealing what then like alps in the sunset thus lighted by wine we'll wear the gay tinge of youth's roses again what softened remembrances come over the heart in gazing on those we've been lost to so long the sorrows the joys of which once they were part still round them like visions of yesterday throng as letters some hand hath invisibly traced when held to the flame will steal out on the sight so many a feeling that long seemed effaced the warmth of a moment like this brings to light and thus as in memory's bark we shall glide to visit the scenes of our boyhood anew though oft we may see looking down on the tide the wreck of full many a hope shining through yet still as in fancy we point to the flowers that once made a garden of all the gay shore deceived for a moment we'll think them still ours and breathe the fresh air of life's morning once more so brief our existence a glimpse at the most is all we can have of the few we hold dear and oft even joy is unheeded and lost for want of some heart that could echo it near how well may we hope when this short life is gone to meet in some world of more permanent bliss for a smile or a grasp of the hand hastening on is all we enjoy of each other in this but come the more rare such delights to the heart the more we should welcome and bless them the more they're ours when we meet they are lost when we part like birds that bring summer and fly when tis over thus circling the cup hand in hand ere we drink let sympathy pledge us through pleasure through pain that fast as a feeling but touches one link her magic shall send it direct through the chain end of poem this recording is in the public domain we love but few by anonymous from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for LibriVox.org by craig franklin we love but few oh yes we mean all kind words that we say to old friends and to new yet doth this truth grow clearer day by day we love but few we love we love what easy words to say and sweet to hear when sunrise splendour brightens all the way and far and near are breath of flowers and carolling of birds and bells that chime our hearts are light we do not weigh our words at morning time but when the matin music all is hushed and life's great load doth weigh us down and thick with dust doth grow the road then do we say less often that we love the words have grown with pleading eyes we look to christ above and clasp our own their lives are bound to ours by mighty bands no mortal straight 
nor death himself with his prevailing hands can separate the world is wide and many friends are dear and friendships true yet do these words read plainer year by year we love but few end of poem this recording is in the public domain the garret by william makepeace thackeray from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter the garret with pensive eyes the little room i view where in my youth i weathered it so long with a wild mistress a staunch friend or two and a light heart still breaking into song making a mock of life and all its cares rich in the glory of my rising sun lightly i vaulted up four pair of stairs in the brave days when i was twenty-one yes tis a garret let him know it who will there is my bed full hard it was and small my table there and I decipher still half a lame couplet charcoaled on the wall. Ye joys that time hath swept with him away, come to mine eyes, ye dreams of love and fun. For you I pawned my watch how many a day in the brave days when I was twenty-one. One jolly evening, when my friends and I made happy music with our songs and cheers, a shout of triumph mounted up thus high and distant cannon opened on our ears we rise we join in the triumphant strain napoleon conquers austerlitz is won tyrants shall never tread us down again in the brave days when i was twenty-one let us be gone the place is sad and strange how far far off these happy times appear all that i have to live i'd gladly change for one such month as i have wasted here to draw long dreams of beauty love and power from fonts of hope that never will outrun and drink all life's quintessence in an hour give me the days when i was twenty-one End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Temple to Friendship by Thomas Moore From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama as the narrator Lian Yao as Laura And Craig Franklin as the sculptor a temple to friendship a temple to friendship cried laura enchanted i'll build in this garden the thought is divine so the temple was built and she now only wanted an image of friendship to place on the shrine so she flew to the sculpture who sat down before her an image the fairest his art could invent but so cold and so dull that the youthful adorer saw plainly that this was not the friendship she meant oh never said she could i think of enshrining an image whose looks are so joyless and dim but yon little god upon roses reclining will make if you please sir a friendship of him so the bargain was struck with the little god laden she joyfully flew to her home in the grove farewell said the sculptor you're not the first maiden who came but for friendship and took away love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Platonic by William B. Tarrant. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1. Home and Friendship, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org. By Thomas Peter as the man. And Lian Yao as the woman. Platonic. I had sworn to be a bachelor, she had sworn to be a maid, for we quite agreed in doubting whether matrimony paid. Besides, we had our higher loves, 
fair science ruled my heart and she said her young affections were all wound up in art so we laughed at those wise men who say that friendship cannot live twixt man and woman unless each has something more to give we would be friends and friends as true as e'er were man and man i'd be a second david and she miss jonathan we scorned all sentimental trash vows kisses tears and sighs high friendship such as ours might well such childish arts despise we liked each other that was all quite all there was to say so we just shook hands upon it in a business sort of way we shared our secrets and our joys together hoped and feared with common purpose sought the goal that young ambition reared we dreamed together of the days the dream bright days to come we were strictly confidential and we called each other chum and to many a day we wandered together o'er the hills i seeking bugs and butterflies and she the ruined mills and rustic bridges and the like that picture makers prize to run in with their waterfalls and groves and summer skies and many a quiet evening in hours of silent ease we floated down the river or strolled beneath the trees and talked in long gradation from the poets to the weather while the western skies and my cigar burned slowly out together yet through it all no whispered word no tell-tale glance or sigh taught aught of warmer sentiment than friendly sympathy we talked of love as coolly as we talked of nebulae and thought no more of being one than we did of being three well good-bye chum i took a hand for the time had come to go my going meant our parting when to meet we did not know i had lingered long and said farewell with a very heavy heart for although we were but friends it is hard for honest friends to part good-bye old fellow don't forget your friends beyond the sea and some day when you've lots of time drop a line or two to me the words came lightly gaily put a great sob just behind whirled upward with a story of quite a different kind and then she raised her eyes to mine great liquid eyes of blue filled to the brim and running o'er like violet cups of dew one long long glance and then i did what i never did before perhaps the tears meant friendship but i'm sure the kiss meant more end of poem this recording is in the public domain Friend and Lover by Mary Ayn de Vere or Madeline Bridges from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. Friend and Lover When Sykes' friend becomes her lover, how sweetly these conditions blend! But oh, what anguish! to discover her lover has become her friend end of poem this recording is in the public domain the boys from poems of the class of 29 harvard by oliver wendell holmes from the world's best poetry volume 1 home and friendship part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. The Boys from the Poems of the Class of Twenty Nine, Harvard. Has there any old fellow got mixed with the boys? If there has, take him out without making a noise. Hang the almanac's cheat and the catalogue's spite. Old time is a liar. We're twenty tonight. We're twenty. We're twenty. Who says we are more? He's tipsy, young jackanapes, show him the door. Grey temples at twenty? Yes, white, if we please. Where the snowflakes fall thickest, there's nothing can freeze. Was it snowing I spoke of? Excuse the mistake. Look close, you will see not a sign of a flake. We want some new garlands for those we have shed, and these are white roses in place of the red. We've a trick we young fellows you may have been told of talking in public as if we were old 
That boy we call doctor, and this we call judge. It's a neat little fiction, of course, it's all fudge. That fellow's the speaker, the one on the right. Mr. Mayor, my young one, how are you tonight? That's our member of Congress, we say when we chaff. There's the reverend, what's his name? Don't make me laugh. That boy with the grave mathematical look made believe he had written a wonderful book, and the Royal Society thought it was true, so they chose him right in, a good joke it was too. There's a boy, we pretend, with a three-decker brain, that could harness a team with a logical chain. When he spoke for our manhood in syllabled fire, we called him the Justice, but now he's the Squire. And there's a nice youngster of excellent pith, Fate tried to conceal him by naming him Smith, but he shouted a song for the brave and the free. Just read on his medal, my country of thee. You hear that boy laughing? You think he's all fun. But the angels laugh too at the good he has done. The children laugh loud as they troop to his call, and the poor man that knows him laughs loudest of all. Yes, we're boys always playing with tongue or with pen and i sometimes have asked shall we ever be men shall we always be youthful and laughing and gay till the last dear companion drops smiling away then here's to our boyhood its gold and its gray the stars of its winter the dews of its may and when we have done with our life-lasting toys dear father take care of thy children the boys Oliver Wendell Holmes End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cane Bottom Chair by William Makepeace Thackeray From the World's Best Poetry Volume 1 Home and Friendship Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter The Cane Bottom Chair In tattered old slippers that toast at the bars and a ragged old jacket perfumed with cigars away from the world and its toils and its cares of a snug little kingdom up four pair of stairs to mount to this realm is a toil to be sure but the fire there is bright and the air rather pure and the view i behold on a sunshiny day is grand through the chimney pots over the way this snug little chamber is crammed in all nooks with worthless old knick-knacks and silly old books and foolish old odds and foolish old ends cracked bargains from brokers cheap keepsakes from friends old armour prints pictures pipes china all cracked old rickety tables and chairs broken-backed a twopenny treasury wondrous to see what matter tis pleasant to you friend and me no better divan need the sultan require than the creaking old sofa that basks by the fire and it is wonderful surely what music you get from the rickety ramshackle wheezy spinet that praying rug came from a turkman's camp by tiber once twinkled that brazen old lamp a mameluke fierce yonder dagger has drawn tis a murderous knife to toast muffins upon long long through the hours and the night and the chimes here we talk of old books and old friends and old times as we sit in a fog made of rich lataki this chamber is pleasant to you friend and me but of all the cheap treasures that garnish my nest there's one that i love and i cherish the best for the finest of couches that's padded with hair, I never would change thee, my cane bottom chair. Tis a bandy legged, high shouldered, worm eaten seat, with a breaking old back and twisted old feet. But since the fair morning when Fanny sat there, I bless thee and love thee, old cane bottom chair. If chairs have but feeling, in holding such charms a thrill must have passed through your withered old arms i looked and i longed and i wished in despair i wished myself turned to a cane-bottomed chair
it was but a moment she sat in this place she'd a scarf on her neck and a smile on her face a smile on her face and a rose in her hair and she sat there and bloomed in my cane-bottomed chair and so i have valued my chair ever since like the shrine of a saint or the throne of a prince saint fanny my patroness sweet i declare the queen of my heart in my cane-bottomed chair when the candles burn low and the company's gone in the silence of night as i sit here alone i sit here alone but we yet are a pair my fanny i see in my cane-bottomed chair she comes from the past and revisits my room she looks as she then did all beauty and bloom so smiling and tender so fresh and so fair and yonder she sits in my cane-bottomed chair End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Welcome by Farid Udi Natar, translated from the Persian by Edward Fitzgerald, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the narrator. Craig Franklin as Shah Mahmood and jason in panama as the furnace stoker the welcome one night shah mahmud who had been of late somewhat distempered with affairs of state strolled through the streets disguised as wont to do and coming to the bath there on the flue saw the poor fellow who the furnace fed sitting beside his water jug and bread mahmud stepped in sat down unasked took up and tasted of the untasted loaf and cup saying within himself grudge but a beat and by the lord your head shall pay for it so having rested warmed and satisfied himself without a word on either side at last the wayward sultan rose to go and then at last his host broke silence so art satisfied well brother and day or night remember when you come this way and want a bit of provender why you are welcome and if not why welcome too the sultan was so tickled with the whim of this quaint entertainment and of him who offered it that many a night again stoker and shah forgathered in that vein till the poor fellow having stood the test of true good fellowship mahmud confessed one night the sultan that had been his guest and in requital of the scanty dole the poor man offered with so large a soul bid him ask any largesse that he would a throne if he would have it so he should the poor man kissed the dust and all said he i ask is what and where i am to be but if the shah from time to time will come as now and see me in the lowly home his presence makes a palace and my own poor flue more royal than another's throne end of poem this recording is in the public domain qual brutus and cassius from julius caesar act four scene three by william shakespeare from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by lian yao as the narrator thomas peter as cassius and jason in panama as brutus quarrel of brutus and cassius from julius caesar act four scene three enter brutus and cassius that you have wronged me doth appear in this you have condemned and noted lucius pella for taking bribes here of the sardians where in my letter praying on his side because i knew the man was slighted off you wronged yourself to write in such a case in such a time as this it is not meet that every nice offence should bear his comment let me tell you cassius you yourself are much condemned to have an itching palm to sell and mark your offices for gold to undeservers ah an itching palm you know that you are brutus that speaks this or by the gods this speech were else your last 
the name of cassius honors this corruption and chastisement doth therefore hide his head chastisement remember march the ides of march remember did not great julius bleed for justice sake what villain touched his body that did stab and not for justice what shall one of us that struck the foremost man of all this world but for supporting robbers shall we now contaminate our fingers with base brills and sell the mighty space of our large honours for so much trash as may be grasped thus i had rather be a dog and bay the moon than such a roman brutus bay not me i'll not endure it you forget yourself to hedge me in i am a soldier i older in practice abler than yourself to make conditions go to you are not cassius i am i say you are not urge me no more i shall forget myself have mind upon your health tempt me no further away slight man is t possible hear me for i will speak must i give way and room to your rash choler shall i be frightened when a madman stares o oh, ye gods ye gods must i endure all this all this i more fret till your proud heart break go show your slaves how choleric you are and make your bondmen tremble must i budge must i observe you must i stand and crouch under your testy humour by the gods you shall digest the venom of your spleen though it do split you for from this day forth i'll use you for my mirth yea for my laughter when you are waspish is it come to this you say you are a better soldier let it appear so make your vaunting true and it shall please me well for mine own part i shall be glad to learn of noble men you wrong me every way you wrong me brutus i said an elder soldier not a better did i say better if you did i care not when caesar lived he durst not thus have moved me peace peace you durst not have so tempted him i durst not no what durst not tempt him for your life you durst not do not presume too much upon my love i may do that i shall be sorry for you have done that you should be sorry for there is no terror cassius in your threats for i am armed so strong in honesty that they pass by me as the idle wind which i respect not i did send to you for certain sums of gold which you denied me for i can raise no money by vile means by heaven i had rather coin my heart and drop my blood for drachmas than to wring from the hard hands of peasants their vile trash by any indirection i did send to you for gold to pay my legions which you denied me was that done like cassius should i have answered caius cassius so when marcus brutus grows so covetous to lock such rascal counters from his friends be ready gods with all your thunderbolts dash him to pieces i denied you not you did i did not he was but a fool that brought my answer back brutus hath rived my heart a friend should bear a friend's infirmities but brutus makes mine greater than they are i do not till you practice them on me you love me not i do not like your faults a friendly eye could never see such faults a flatterer's would not though they do appear as huge as high olympus come antony and young octavius come revenge yourselves alone on cassius for cassius is a weary of the world hated by one he loves braved by his brother checked like a bondman all his faults observed set in a notebook learned and conned by rote to cast into my teeth oh i could weep my spirit from mine eyes there is my dagger and here my naked breast within a heart dearer than plutus is mine richer than gold if that thou beest a roman 
take it forth i that denied thee gold will give my heart strike as thou didst at caesar for i know when thou didst hate him worst thou lovest him better than ever thou lovest cassius sheathe your dagger be angry when you will it shall have scope do what you will dishonor shall be humor o oh, cassius you are yoked with a lamb that carries anger as the flint bears fire who much enforced shows a hasty spark and straight is cold again hath cassius lived to be but mirth and laughter to his brutus when grief and blood ill-tempered vexeth him when i spoke that i was ill-tempered too do you confess so much give me your hand and my heart too oh brutus what's the matter have not you love enough to bear with me when that rash humour which my mother gave me makes me forgetful yes cassius and from henceforth when you are over earnest with your brutus he'll think your mother chides and leave you so end of poem this recording is in the public domain sparkling and bright by charles venno hoffman from the world's best poetry volume one Herman Friendship, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. Sparkling and bright, sparkling and bright in liquid light, does the wine or goblets gleam in, with hue as red as the rosy bed which a bee would choose to dream in. Then fill to night with hearts as light to loves as gay and fleeting, as bubbles that swim on the beaker's brim and break on the lips while meeting. Oh, if mirth might arrest the flight of time through life's dominions, we here a while would now beguile the greybeard of his pinions, to drink to-night with hearts as light to loves as gay and fleeting, as bubbles that swim on the beaker's brim and break on the lips while meeting. But since delight can't tempt the white, nor fond regret delay him, nor love himself can hold the elf, nor sober friendship stay him, well drink to-night with hearts as light to loves as gay and fleeting, as bubbles that swim on the beaker's brim and break on the lips while meeting. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wreath the Bowl by Thomas Moore From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter Wreath the Bowl Wreathe the bowl with flowers of soul the brightest wit can find us will take a flight towards heaven to-night and leave dull earth behind us should love amid the reefs be hid that joy the enchanter brings us no danger fear while wine is near we'll drown him if he stings us then wreathe the bowl with flowers of soul the brightest wit can find us we'll take a flight towards heaven to-night and leave dull earth behind us twas nectar fed of old tis said there juno's jove's apollos and man may brew his nectar to the rich receipts as follows take wine like this let looks of bliss around it well be blended then bring wit's beam to warm the stream and there's your nectar splendid so wreathe the bowl with flowers of soul the brightest wit can find us we'll take a flight towards heaven to-night and leave dull earth behind us say why did time his glass sublime fill up with scents unsightly when wine he knew runs brisker through and sparkles far more brightly oh lend it us in smiling thus the glass into each sever make pleasure glide in double tide and fill both ends for ever then wreathe the bowl with flowers of soul the brightest wit can find us will take a flight towards heaven to-night and leave dull earth behind us end of poem this recording is in the public domain a winter wish by robert hinckley messinger from the world's best poetry volume one Home and Friendship, Part Two. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. 
a winter wish old wine to drink i give the slippery juice that drippeth from the grape thrown loose within the tun plucked from beneath the cliff of sunny-sided teneriffe and ripen neath the blink of india's sun peat whisky hot tempered with well-boiled water these make the long night shorter forgetting not good stout old english porter old wood to burn ay bring the hillside beach from where the owlets meet and screech and ravens croak the crackling pine and cedar sweet bring to a clump of fragrant peat dug neath the fern the knotted oak a faggot too perhaps whose bright flame dancing winking shall light us at our drinking while the oozing sap shall make sweet music to our thinking old books to read i bring those nodes of wit the brazen clasp the vellum writ time-honoured tomes the same my sire scanned before the same my grandsire thumbed o'er the same his sire from college bore the well-earned mead of oxford domes old homer blind old horace rake anacreon by old tully plautus terence lie mort arthur's olden minstrel sigh quaint burton quainter spencer ay and gervase markham's veneri nor leave behind the holy book by which we live and die old friend to talk i bring those chosen few the wise the courtly and the true so rarely found him for my wine him for my stud him for my easel distic bud in mountain walk bring walter good with soulful fred and learned will and thee my alter ego dearer still for every mood these add a bouquet to my wine these add a sparkle to the pine if these i tine can books or fire or wine be good end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mahogany tree by william makepeace thackeray from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by sonia the mahogany tree christmas is here winds whistle shrill icy and chill little care we little we fear weather without sheltered about the mahogany tree once on the boughs birds of rare plume sang in its bloom night birds are we here we carouse singing like them perched round the stem of the jolly old tree here let us board boys as we sit laughter and wit flashing so free life is but short when we are gone let them sing on round the old tree evenings we knew happy as this faces we miss pleasant to see kind hearts and true gentle and just peace to our dust we sing round the tree care like a dun lurks at the gate let the dog wait happy we'll be drink every one pile up the coals fill the red bowls round the old tree drain we the cup friend are the freight spirits are laid in the red sea mantle it up empty it yet let us forget round the old tree sorrows be gone life and its ills duns and their bills bid we to flee come with the dawn blue devil's bright leave us to-night round the old tree end of poem this recording is in the public domain the ballad of bouillabaisse by william makepeace thackeray from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by thomas peter as the narrator and sonia as the waiter the ballad of bouillabaisse a street there is in paris famous for which no rhyme our language yields rue neuve de petit champ its name is the new street of the little fields and there's an inn 
not rich and splendid, but still in comfortable case, the which in youth I oft attended, to eat a bowl of bouillabaisse. This bouillabaisse a noble dish is, a sort of soup, or broth, or brew, or hotchpotch of all sorts of fishes, that Greenwich never could outdo. Green herbs, red peppers, mussels, saffron, soles, onions, garlic, roach, and dace. All these you eat at Terry's tavern, in that one dish of bouillabaisse. Indeed, a rich and savoury stew it is, and true philosophers methinks, who love all sorts of natural beauties, should love good victuals and good drinks. And Cordelier or Benedictine might gladly show his lot embrace, nor find a fast day too afflicting, which served him up a bouillabaisse. I wonder if the house still there is. Yes, here the lamp is as before. The smiling red sheet a carrière is still opening oysters at the door. Is Terry still alive and able? I recollect his droll grimace. He'd come and smile before your table, and hoped you liked your bouillabaisse. We enter. Nothing's changed or older. How's Monsieur Terry, waiter, pray? The waiter stares and shrugs his shoulder. Monsieur is dead this many a day. It is the lot of saint and sinner. So honest Therese ran his race. What will Monsieur require for dinner? Say, do you still cook bouillabaisse? Oh, oui, Monsieur. Is the waiter's answer. Quel vin, monsieur, désire-t-il? Tell me a good one. That I can, sir. De Chambertin with yellow seal. So Terry's gone, I say, and sink in my old accustomed corner place. He's done with feasting and with drinking, with burgundy and bouillabaisse. My old accustomed corner here is. The table still is in the nook. Ah, oh, vanished many a busy year is this well-known chair since last I took. When first I saw ye, Gari Luwogi, I'd scarce a beard upon my face. And now a grizzled, grim old fogey, I sit and wait for bouillabaisse. Where are you, old companions trusty, of early days here met to dine? Come, waiter, quick, a flagon crusty, I'll pledge them in the good old wine. The kind old voices and old faces my memory can quick retrace. Around the board they take their places, and share the wine and bouillabaisse. Well, there's Jack has made a wondrous marriage. There's laughing Tom is laughing yet. There's brave Augustus drives his carriage. Oh, there's poor old Fred in the gazette. On James's head the grass is growing. Good Lord, the world has wagged apace. Since here we set the claret flowing, and drank and ate the bouillabaisse. Ah oh, me, how quick the days are flitting. I mind me of a time that's gone, when here I'd sit, as now I'm sitting, in this same place, but not to learn. A fair young form was nestled near me, a dear, dear face looked fondly up, and sweetly spoke and smiled to cheer me. There's no one now to share my cup. I drink it as the fates ordain it. Come, fill it, and have done with rhymes. Fill up the lonely glass, and drain it in memory of dear old times. Welcome the wine, whate'er the seal is, and sit you down and say your grace, with thankful heart, whate'er the meal is. Here comes the smoking bouillabaisse. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dead Poet Friend by Callie Mackers, translated from the Greek by W. Corey, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Dead Poet Friend. They told me Heraclitus, they told me you were dead. They brought me bitter news to hear and bitter tears to shed. I wept as I remembered how often you and i had tired the sun with talking and sent him down the sky and now that thou art lying my dear old carrion guest 
a handful of grey ashes long long ago at rest still are thy pleasant voices thy nightingales awake for death he taketh all away but these he cannot take end of poem this recording is in the public domain Moors et Vita by Samuel Waddington From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin Moors et Vita We know not yet what life shall be What shore beyond her shore be set What grief awaits us or what glee We know not yet Still somewhere in sweet converse met old friends we say beyond death's sea shall meet and greet us nor forget those days of yore those years when we were loved and true but will death let our eyes the longed-for vision see we know not yet end of poem this recording is in the public domain to seek a friend Extracts from Friendship by William Cowper From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama To Seek a Friend Extracts from Friendship What virtue or what mental grace But men unqualified and base Will boast it their possession? Profusion apes the noble part Of liberality of heart and dullness of discretion if every polished gem we find illuminating heart or mind provoke to imitation no wonder friendship does the same that jewel of the purest flame or rather constellation no friendship will abide the test that stands on sordid interest or mean self-love erected nor such as may a while subsist between the sought and sensualist for vicious ends connected who seek a friend should come disposed to exhibit in full bloom disclosed the graces and the beauties that form the character he seeks for tis a union that bespeaks reciprocated duties but will sincerity suffice it is indeed above all price and must be made the basis but every ritual of the soul must constitute the charming whole all shining in their places a fretful temper will divide the closest knot that may be tied by ceaseless sharp corrosion a temper passionate and fierce may suddenly your joys disperse at one immense explosion in vain the talkative unite in hopes of permanent delight the secret just committed forgetting its important weight they drop through mere desire to prate and by themselves outwitted how bright sir the prospect seems all thoughts of friendship are but dreams if envy chance to creep in an envious man if you succeed may prove a dangerous foe indeed but not a friend worth keeping the great and small but rarely meet on terms of amity complete plebeians must surrender and yield so much to noble folk it is combining fire with smoke obscurity with splendor courtier and patriot cannot mix their heterogeneous politics without an effervescence like that of salts with lemon juice which does not yet like that produce a friendly coalescence religion should extinguish strife and make a calm of human life but friends that chance to differ on points which god has left at large how freely will they meet and charge no combatants are stiffer to prove at last my main intent needs no expense of argument no cutting and contriving seeking a real friend we seem to adopt the chemist's golden dream with still less hope of thriving sometimes the fault is all our own some blemish in due time made known by trespass or omission sometimes occasion brings to light our friend's defect long hid from sight and even from suspicion 
then judge yourself and prove your man as circumspectly as you can and having made election beware no negligence of yours such as a friend but ill endures enfeeble his affection as similarity of mind or something not to be defined first fixes our attention so manners decent and polite the same we practised at first sight must save it from declension pursue the search and you will find good sense and knowledge of mankind to be at least expedient and after summoning all the rest religion ruling in the breast a principal ingredient william cowper end of poem this recording is in the public domain advice by william dunbar from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox .org by craig franklin advice if ye would love and loved be in mind keep well this thing is three and sadly in thy breast imprint be secret true and patient for he that patience cannot lear he shall this pleasance have peculiar though he had all this world is rent be secret true and patient for who that secret cannot be him all good fellowship shall flee and credence none shall him be lent be secret true and patient and he that is of heart untrue from he be kenned farewell adieu fie on him fie his fame is went be secret true and patient thus he that wants ain of these three ain lover glad may never be but i in something discontent be secret true and patient not with thy tongue thyself discure the thing is that thou hast of nature for if thou dost thou shall repent be secret true and patient End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Friend from On Friendship by Nicholas Grimwald from the World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part Two. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. The Friend from On Friendship. Of all the heavenly gifts that mortal men commend, What trusty treasure in the world can countervail a friend? Our health is soon decayed, goods casual, light, and vain. Broke we have seen the force of power, and honor suffer strain. In body's lust man doth resemble but base brute. True virtue gets and keeps a friend, good guide of our pursuit. Whose hearty zeal with ours accords in every case, no term in time, no space of place, no storm can it deface. When fickle fortune fails, this knot endureth still. Thy kin out of their kind may swerve when friends owe thee good will. What sweeter solace shall befall than such a one to find, upon whose breast thou mayst repose the secrets of thy mind? He waileth at thy woe, his tears with thine be shed with thee doth he all joys enjoy so lief a life is led behold thy friend and of thyself the pattern see one soul a wonder shall it seem in bodies twain to be in absence present rich in want in sickness sound yea after death alive mayest thou by the sure friend be found each house each town each realm by the steadfast love doth stand while foul debate breeds bitter bale in each divided land o friendship flower of flowers o lively sprite of life o sacred bond of blissful peace the stalwart staunch of strife nicholas grimwald end of poem this recording is in the public domain Take the World as It Is by Charles Swain From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 
Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Take the world as it is. Take the world as it is. There are good and bad in it, and good and bad will be from now to the end. And they who expect to make saints in a minute are in danger of marring more hearts than they'll mend. If you wish to be happy, never seek for the faults, or you're sure to find something or other amiss. Mid much that debases and much that exalts, the world's not a bad one if left as it is. Take the world as it is. If the surface be shining, never rake up the sediment hidden below. There's wisdom in this, but there's none in repining over things which can rarely be mended, we know. There's beauty around us which let us enjoy, and chide not unless it may be with a kiss. Though earth not the heaven we thought when a boy, there's something to live for if taken as it is. Take the world as it is, with its smiles and its sorrows, its love and its friendship, its falsehood and truth, its schemes that depend on the breath of tomorrow, its hopes which pass by like the dreams of our youth yet oh whilst the light of affection may shine the heart in itself hath a fountain of bliss in the worst there's some spark of a nature divine and the wisest and best take the world as it is end of poem this recording is in the public domain old lang syne by robert burns from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two song for librivox dot org by lian yao thomas peter jason in panama sonia and craig franklin old lang syne <laughs> And surely I'll be mine 
and we'll take a cup of kindness yet for old Lang Syne. For old Lang Syne, my dear, for old Lang Syne, we'll take a cup of kindness yet for old Lang Syne. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2.